Southeast Asia in terms of temperature, very little variation, uh, very consistent temperatures throughout the year. We know this for a few different reasons. First off, the equator goes right through here. So they're not going to get much change in the intensity of the solar energy, but also the day length is very consistent. It's pretty much always about 12 hours uh, of, of sunlight uh, each and every day. So very consistent. Secondly, we don't see huge mountain chains coming through here. It is quite rugged. Not saying there's none, there's no uh, topography change, but we don't see the Himalayans. We don't see the Rockies. Uh, we don't see the Caucasus Mountains in this particular area. So we're not going to be affected by altitude differences. Further, we're very maritime. And this is probably the most maritime, uh, other than the, maybe the Caribbean and Central America, where we find you know, extreme amounts of islands in the, the environments there. You're not going to see much changes in the temperature. We see the moderating influences of a water body. So all these reasons uh, combine to explain why we see very little temperature variation here in Southeast Asia. So what I'm going to do is just go through the various months of the year. Uh, we're going to see pretty much, you know, most of the places are going to stay yellow. Now you do see some variations in those highland areas. I've mentioned, you know, some highland areas, particularly northern mainland Southeast Asia up there along uh, the border with China. We should see a little bit more fluctuation, but that also makes sense a little farther from the equator. Uh, than those areas right smack dab in the tropical areas. So most definitely we've got A climates overwhelmingly in this particular area of the world. So January, now we go then through February, March, and we see, you know, some temperature changes. It gets definitely warmer, you know, uh, especially in uh, northern uh, mainland Southeast Asia because that's their summertime. Uh, and we see pretty much it's yellow throughout uh, much of the year. Uh, so once again, what we do is we like to look at the you know the before and after, and so January to July. Um, so we see you know for the most part we're yellow. Uh, we look at the Philippines, Indonesia, hardly any change. Uh, so Singapore, if you ever go to Singapore, pretty much every day it's 80 degrees. Uh, one of my college roommates teaches tennis in Singapore, and every single he doesn't have to he doesn't buy sweatpants. He doesn't need pants. He doesn't need uh, long sleeve shirts. He wears t-shirts and shorts every single day of the year because it's very consistently warm. In terms of precipitation, we do see some differences. Now, overwhelmingly, what you're going to find is those insular part of Southeast Asia gets a huge amount of rain. Uh, whereas when you go to the mainland areas, you're going to get a little bit more variations. And it's going to change with the seasons. So once again here, just like South Asia, we have the role of the intertropical convergence zone that dense rain belt that moves as the seasons change. And so during the summer period, uh, the summer monsoon, warm air moves towards the Asian continent, bringing warmer temperatures, but also a whole lot more rain to mainland Southeast Asia. Whereas in the winter time, you see the air moves off of the Asian continent towards insular uh, Southeast Asia, and then thus, uh, drying out mainland Southeast Asia, if you would. So here we see January, we're going to go through the seasons, and we should see, for the most part, insular stays relatively, you know, yeah, high amounts of precipitation, whereas then in the mainland, you're going to get that pronounced dry period, but also that pronounced wet period during the wet monsoon uh, season. Uh, so in some places, they actually get two monsoon seasons, so they're getting a huge amount of rain. Uh, because they get kind of a, just depending on where your island is, you might get the, the movement of warm, moist air coming from your south one uh, during one monsoon season, and then warm, moist air might come from the north uh, during the other season. This depends on if you're surrounded by water. Uh, but mainland uh, Southeast Asia, you look what's to the north of that, uh, is overwhelmingly continental, extremely dry uh, 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 Asia. And so we're going to go through the various months, and so January, February, March, we can see now as we're getting into the summer monsoon period, we can see now that rain moves uh, up there in uh, Burma, uh, Thailand, Laos, uh, which we see uh, the dense amount of rain. So the precipitation pattern changes, and now we see a huge amount of rain up there in mainland Southeast Asia. And it's still raining. They still get a good amount of precipitation there in insular Southeast Asia, uh, but the patterns change. And of course, now we're entering the dry monsoon period for mainland Southeast Asia. And so the winter monsoon now dumps a huge amount of rain uh, there in the insular uh, part of Southeast Asia. 
Now, when we think about this, we see, you know, patterns January and July. Uh, so we see high amounts of precipitation. Uh, but we also have another key natural hazard in this particular area, and that's hurricanes. So what this is is a map that shows the paths of hurricanes over time in uh, the uh, uh, this part of the world. So we have Australia down here. And if you notice, hurricanes, they never go across the equator. But I'm not going to really explain too much of that in the case of Southeast Asia, which is stick to the basics. So here, Southeast Asia, it gets a huge amount of of earthquake, what they call actually here tropical cyclones or, or typhoons that comes through this particular area in particular during that summer monsoon period. Uh, so occasionally they go across the Malay Peninsula can get up into Burma. Burma's had some bad ones, uh, and one bad one in which it was huge amount of destruction, but uh, uh, you couldn't come in there and help uh, the Burmese out because the government wouldn't let that. Uh, they didn't want anyone to know that they have any problems uh, from from natural disasters. Uh, and so also what fuels a lot of these hurricanes is having warm water underneath. And so we think about the shallow end of the pool compared to the deep end of the pool. The shallow end is much warmer. And all throughout Southeast Asia, we've got a lot of shallow water. So if a hurricane ever was moving through this particular area and came over this hot, shallow water, boy, would it intensify and really cause a lot of damage. And that's a key concern in Southeast Asia.